Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I've got a makeup tutorial for you inspired by January. So like cold weather, icy weather, but like the holiday season is over. So I don't want to go overboard with heaps of makeup. I just want to do something skincare based that's still fun and cold. Without it being a negative thing, the cold thing. Yeah. Anyway, let's get started. And whenever you're going to do a look that has a lot to do with skincare, um, you know, it's nice to start with the skincare. So I'm starting off with a bare and clean face. And um, yeah, what I also always do is just grab some disinfecting gel. That's see through, you couldn't see that, but just believe me, it's there. Um, because we're gonna touch our faces and you don't want to spread germs on your face because you'll get zits. I already have one here that we're just going to ignore, especially now that I pointed it out excessively. Just ignore it. It's just been the holidays. I was busy. I didn't take proper care of my skin and now it's punishing me for it. Anyway, um, but that aside, I'm just going to um, start on my eye care first. What I always do is just put a dot above my eye and also below it not too too much of course because otherwise the makeup is just going to slide around um, and then just carefully distribute it over the skin and just tap it in a little um, just kicking in an open door here but your eye area is sensitive like if you're a human being at least your eye area is sensitive and the whole idea with the skincare is to prevent wrinkles and stuff so don't go you know with the sound effects and all don't be too rough on your skin, really carefully just pat it in uh, and don't go rubbing over it really roughly because otherwise you're just going to, well for one, you're going to wipe the skincare off instead of like making it go into the skin and also you're going to create wrinkles which is, you know, not what we're going for and then for the next part, um, usually with the serum in summer I like to go, this is not sponsored by Yves Rocher by the way, just, I, I just love the skincare so it's all Yves Rocher Anyways, but in summer I like to use this mattifying one because then it's more sweaty and I'm trying to stay matte. Uh, whereas in winter time, I usually go for a more oily, sort of more like, I'm not sure if there's actually oil in there, but it feels more nourishing than the other one. Um, this is a anti-pollution one. So yeah, this is what we're going to go for today. Because at least for me, it's a thing when I go walking outside, jogging outside or ice skating or whatever kind of activity outdoors in winter with the harsh cold winds. Just being a little bit dramatic. I live in the Netherlands, not on the North Pole. But anyways, um, I just really prefer to have some sort of barrier on my skin between the, you know, harsh winds and my actual skin. And yeah, that's just something... That I feel this serum does. Now for the next step you could do a, um, you know, just a moisturizer first all over your face. But I'm going to use a Tinted Skin Veil, which is also partly skincare, so I don't really feel the need to. What I do always use is SPF. Now this is SPF 50, which admittedly is a bit much in winter, but it's almost empty. And I don't want to save it till next summer, because I'm not sure if it's not going to go bad. And I don't want to toss it, because I'm a cheapskate, and I'm not going to waste all this. So yeah, like SPF 20 is fine in winter, 15, 20, whatever. But I'm going to go for this one because it's not empty yet. Side note, just, you know, a little reminder. This look is entirely like based on like going to do outdoor things in winter. Um, if you're going to go to a party or whatever uh, where there's going to be flash photography, obviously cut down on the SPF a little because otherwise you're going to look like a ghost. And unless it's a very, very late or very early Halloween party, that's probably not what you want. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just keep that in mind. Anyway, I'm just going to let this sink in for a little bit and then move on to makeup. Now, the first part of set makeup is, like I mentioned, the BB cream. Well, it's technically called a skin veil, but it's basically a BB cream. Any BB cream will do. Um, all the makeup I use will be listed below the video, as always, though. But anyways, if you're using something that actually is from a squeezy tube, by the way, like I just used, always make sure to press it into your skin. Might not sound hygienic, but I have the experience a lot that it certainly like splurts out of it and gets on my clothes and I'm wearing something pale and I don't want to ruin it with makeup. Just a warning. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to spread this out, obviously. Now, another thing what I like to do is apply highlighter, just a cream or a jelly highlighter like this one. Um, below my powder, just because I feel like it gets more of this nice glow from within sort of thing. 
Um, I do go a little bit more wild with it than I usually would with a highlighter because I am still going to put powder on top of it. So it is going to get dulled a little bit. Um, this one does shine through beautifully. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't disappear by any means. But I go a little bit more wild than I usually would just because I know I'm still applying powder. So what I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to go disco ball at this point. Now, while we wait for the face base to sort of just sink into the skin, I'm just going to do my eyebrows. I haven't done my concealer yet, because that's, that does have a tendency to crease on me, and I don't want to wait for it to set and get for too long. Uh, but I just feel like my face makeup just looks better if I don't immediately go over it with powder while it's still completely damp. I don't want to call it wet, because it's not necessarily like wet, but you, you get what I mean. Anyways, I'm just going to keep my eyebrows pretty natural, because we're going for fresh and not for full-on glam. My natural brows always like to use a pencil, just because I feel like it gives a softer result. Um, this one is by Urban Decay, and it has this triangular... Yes, that's a triangle. Primary school, did I learn anything? Anyway, um, but yeah, it has a triangular little um, actual pencil bit. So I'm just using the, like, the long side of it to basically create a bit of a color behind my eyebrow hairs. But then in the inner corners I used the really, really, really thin point of it. Just to make sure that I get more of an eyebrow hair effect. Because some people actually have eyebrows that match. Mine are not just, not twins. They're like barely related if I leave them alone for too long. So yeah, this one goes in a lot less far than that one. So I always need to fill it in a little. So, so, my, so, so my eyebrows actually look like they belong on my face. Both of them. Now for concealer, I am going to use something quite pale, but also something that's not extremely, um, you know, opaque. Like, this isn't a full high coverage concealer, it's just a brightening one. Just to make sure that everything goes bright, but, you know, still natural. Then it finally is time for the powder, um, and when I'm going for a very natural look, I obviously don't want to like be completely matte and stuff my face with powder, so I'm just applying quite a bit of powder in the areas where I know that I'm either going to get oily or it's going to crease, so like below my eyes, this little part of my forehead here, bridge of my nose, my chin, that sort of stuff, and other than that I'm just going to go over it with a big blur, big blush, big brush. Just to give it a light dusting of powder. Next up, I want some more color on my face. And um, you can tell, by the way, this, uh, this side is just what we've just done together. Um, you can still see the shadows on my face. It's a natural skin colors because we didn't cover it all with heavy makeup. Um, so I don't feel like I need to do a contour or anything. But I am going to use a blush. This is a matte blush in a peachy shade. Which I'm first going to apply below my cheekbone and then on the apples of my cheeks. Because I do want to use it for a little bit of a contour. That's why the blush needs to be matte. Um, but also I want that nice... Like when you have like the cold wind on your face. And you just get this nice flush from it in your cheeks. That's the sort of look that I just want to accentuate. And already create without being in the cold wind to begin with. Now all that's left to do for the face is just apply some eyebrow gel. Because we've already done the highlight to begin with. And really that's as fast as uh, <laughs> my face based makeup can go. Then we're a little bit closer for the eye makeup. Uh, I'm going to use all Alice Fast products just because I feel like doing a cream look. And I also feel like cream makeup just looks so nice and natural and not quite matte. But yeah, these products do really stay in place really well. So I don't need to use a base or anything with them either. Um, or set them with anything. And what I always like to do is just grab a more of a firm brush. Like for example, if I were to try and do this with my uh, big fluffy blender, all the hairs would uh, like cling together and just create little stripes instead of actually blending it. This brush is a little bit more firm, so I'm just going to apply some of the product on the brush. Because this stuff is really pigmented and I don't want to use too much. Then I close the container again so the entire thing doesn't dry out, because that would be tragic. And then I start to very carefully apply it, starting with the part where I want it to be the darkest. And then just carefully bringing it around to that area. Um, it's always best if you're using a product you're not very familiar with. Like, I know this product really well, so I know how much I need to use to get the result I want. But if you're using a product that you're not very familiar with, 
do try to you know just reapply it a couple of times until it has the intensity you want rather than to risk applying too much at once and then be stuck with way more than you actually wanted because you know it's way easier to add something than to take something away but anyways i just wiped my brush down and now i'm blending the edge of it and again this is the first product but this product it does give you enough time to actually blend it but it doesn't give you like five hours to do so it will dry and set <laughs> so yeah just do this per eye don't apply it first and then start blending it because you might actually get stuck you know with a weird round smudge on your eyelid instead of something that resembles makeup Next up, it's time for the more icy part of this winter look. We're going to go for a very pale blue, and we're not by any means going to make it very, very blue blue. As you can tell from the eye, that's already done. I'm just going to apply it on my brush again, the exact same brush in the ex ex exact same way as I did just now. Sometimes I can't speak as fast as I think. Anyway, and just apply it in this inner part of my eyelid here. And then just spread it out into the taupe shade very very gently now i'm just gonna apply some more because i do want this to be more intense than it is right now but that's up to your own taste you can also use a very bold blue eyeshadow if you want you can use one that's even more just gray it depends on your own taste i just want it a little bit more intense without making it too too hello camera i'm here focus thank you Anyway, without making it too brightly colored. So as you can tell now, we sort of have a pale blue smoky eye without it being too blue. Like if you would do the crease blue as well, then it would be more intense. But I was going for more of a classic vibe today for a fresh look. And like I said earlier, with the more shiny finish of a cream eyeshadow... Um, as you can tell, it just looks more alive. I don't know. Like, I just feel like it looks more alive. And especially in winter when at least my skin is a little bit more dry. I just feel like if I have my makeup just a little bit more juicy, I guess, including the eyeshadow. The entire thing just looks a lot better than if it's dry and cold and matte. And I sort of feel like I start looking like a zombie. Yeah, I just prefer this. Anyway, now it's time for some eyeliner. Now I'm going to go for a brown eyeliner just because with my coloring it tends to look more natural. Of course if you have very dark eyes and or dark hair and or dark skin then you know black eyeliner might actually look really nice with this. One thing I always like to do to make it a little bit more intense is to put a very thin line of liner below my outer corner on the bottom. I hope you can tell the difference. I've already done it here. There's something very, very thin. It doesn't need to be neat or anything. It doesn't need to be thick. It really needs not to be thick, actually. Just a little something to bring up the intensity of the eyes. Now, um, you could just go with only mascara, but I feel way too lazy to want to remove a whole load of mascara in the evening. So, what I'm going to do instead is just apply some very tiny lashes. Um, just very easy to apply small lashes. And this is the before and the after. As you can tell, it's, you know, a little bit more there. Um, yeah, I just really, really love these lashes because they're very comfortable and they just give it a nice extra something without making my eyelids feel all heavy. Uh, I'm just going to apply a little bit of mascara on top of them and then I suddenly remembered I forgot my inner corner highlight, so we're going to do that as well. Also applying a little bit of nude pencil on my waterline now we're here anyways. Now that inner corner highlight is just going to be a pale gold, also at a spas. Um, just going to apply a little bit on a smaller brush this time around. Close the tube again so it doesn't dry out and apply it in my inner corner. As one usually does with an inner corner highlight I suppose. Anyway, then I'm going to blend it out with a bigger brush. I didn't want to apply it with a bigger brush because then it would have been everywhere. But I can't properly blend it softly with the small one. So yeah, this just gives a nicer result. And then, before I forget, another step I almost forgot, which is the setting spray. 
And then the last little lips. Now you could go for either a classic red or you could go for a more modern nude. But I want to go for classic yet something a little bit different. So I'm going to go for hot pink instead. Just because I feel like it. And now that you've had the probably displeasure of seeing my very dry lips up close, you will understand probably that I'm not going to go for a liquid lipstick with a matte finish in winter. Instead, I'm going to go for a more nourishing one um, that's also a little bit shiny. And that leaves us with the final results. Um, yeah, it's exactly what I was going for. It's fresh, it's... You know, it's sort of natural, but also sort of classy, I guess. Like, it's... Like you've made an effort, but not too much of an effort, you know? That kind of vibe was what I was going for. Um, and it's nice and glowy, despite the cold winds blowing upon my face. Well, not right now, because I'm indoors. But, you know, envision being outside on a nice, crisp winter's day. Like, blue sky, freezing temperatures. Is that really nice vibe? I don't know, I love that. Anyway, so, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, exactly what I was going for. And I really hope you enjoyed watching it and that this tutorial was useful to you. Um, if you did enjoy it, please click the like button. It would really help me out. And if you want to see more of my videos, you can always subscribe to my channel. I mostly do makeup tutorials. Uh, but I also do a vlog once every three weeks. And sometimes other random videos. Just, you know, whatever I feel like filming, I film. Um, so, yeah. For now, as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!